So um, as mentioned, I am Anil Dash. Um, I am a guy, I'm gonna to talk to you about government. I'm not from the government. I've never worked for the government. Uh, my credentials, such as they are, is that I've had a blog for about a decade. Uh, it's at dashes.com. I also have a Twitter account. These are uh, sturdy credentials that I think a lot of you share with me and so that you can tell I am qualified to talk about this topic. Um, and so what we find uh, in, in the community that I come from is that being in the conversation on blogs and Twitter and everywhere else connects you to a network. Uh, in my case, having an early start gave me an early advantage, which is to say people who were blogging 10 years ago, and here's a collection of a bunch of us out at dinner in Austin, Texas about eight years ago, had an unfair advantage in getting hooked up into the network. So there's me at this table back when I still had hair. And what you'll find that's interesting about this community is not merely that everybody's grown up and had kids and dresses a lot better right now, but that in the eight years since then, these people responsible for creating or co-creating Twitter and Blogger and Flickr and Gawker and a bunch of other sites that don't end in the letter R, and all told, the impact of the network formed by the people at this table is probably about a billion people using these services. And so what we find is, at that time I was working in a newspaper, before that I was in the music industry, and what I discovered firsthand is that technology networks can transform culture and change the business that you're in. Um, and I think the music and newspaper industries do still exist, but I'm in a much more interesting one right now. And what we find is the new platform for innovation is the government's embrace of social networking technologies in the same way that we've embraced them in business. Let me give you an example. So I said I'm on Twitter. Um, I have an unfair advantage. I don't think um, Ashton's here yet, so since he's not here, I'm probably the person with the most Twitter followers in the room. Again, this comes from being early on the network, and what it lets me do is simple things like ask a question of what phone I should get. We've all had this, right? What are, what are the new gadgets? I don't want to keep track. Uh, what's the interesting answer to this question? And because I'm connected to a network, I can collect back all the responses. This is across all the different social networks that I'm on, and all these people have their responses. This is an app, I'll tell you about it in a, little, in a minute, how it works. And in amongst the usual responses was a guy, I don't know who Rooney is, but he said, here is a list of how much radiation the most popular handsets in America put out. And what he gave me was the answer to a question I didn't know I was asking, right? These are the insights we get when we're connected to a network. And so we think, you know, if you tally all the responses that come back, you're going to get some people saying get on an Apple phone, get a Google phone, but instead you get this insight, which is like radiation matters, right? We got a little bit of, of, of that serendipity that we wish people in government could get. Now, the reason I'm able to collect those responses is actually Gina Trapani, who's here today, and some of you know from when you read her on fastcompany.com, you see her videos. She made this application called Think Tank where she can collect responses, for example, why not to get an iPad, and turn them into an article. Now, if we can, in our personal lives, make these insights, turn them into articles, share our knowledge, certainly others could benefit from this knowledge. And if we have the power, this unfair advantage to use these networks, who are the people that need that power the most? Well, if you could have your own think tank, well, the people that actually today are stuck with a small think tank of six people in a closed door meeting in a room in DC are the people who could probably benefit the most from this. And so when we took that question of who needs these tools the most, it became very obvious that at Expert Labs, we could answer that question. And the, ob the obvious answer, the right place to start, is at the top. So we went to the American Association of the Advancement of Science, the folks that published the journal Science, and we said we'd like to do an experiment. We'd like to make this technology that collects all these responses on different social networks available. And not just broadly available for every business to use, although that's great too, but available for the White House to use and for the policymakers and the entire federal government to use. Because what they had told us when the current administration came to government was that they were gonna open up government. We were gonna be able to respond to them. And they meant it, they were sincere, but they didn't have the right tools for the job. And I'll give you one example. Back in February, they asked, what are the grand challenges in science and technology that are facing our country? Right, this is a pretty cool question. Grand challenges are, um, you know, unimaginably big goals, right? Like going back to the moon or uh, the human genome sequencing. These are the things where we inspire creativity that will lead to all kinds of innovations that we couldn't have anticipated, right? Solar cells that are as cheap as paint so we can paint our roofs and generate power uh, just by sitting in our homes. And they asked us this question back in February. How many of you uh, heard of the question? How many of you answered? You didn't fax in your response? No. 
So I didn't either. Um, and we thought, you know what? Actually, if in between all of the other conversations I'm having, people sharing funny pictures with me on Facebook and you know, cat pictures on Twitter or whatever else, we could connect, we could do a lot better at driving responses to these open government initiatives. Because as it stands, you don't get a lot of responses when you ask people to go to a government website and fill out a request for, for, for and they call them a request for innovation now, which I like, um, on demand. Um, and so they didn't get a lot of responses. Maybe the number's a little bigger, but for most of their, their call for action that go out on social networks, they get a few dozen responses. Now I get hundreds of responses, so we said, let's take these tools and put them to bear. And what's amazing is the White House did it. They went to their Twitter account, which has 1.7 million followers, and they said, what are the grand scientific challenges facing our country? Last week, they also went from, not just on Twitter, they went to Facebook, and they asked on their Facebook wall, what are the grand challenges facing America? We started this campaign with them on Monday of last week to wrap up on Wednesday of last week. So instead of four months of we hope you'll you know, call in or email in with your idea. We said here is a 48 hour period that's directed and then we can actually capture a response on the social networks you're already using. And we gave people a specific question, a specific time period to respond and they didn't have to go out of their way. Right? They weren't going off to some website they never visited. They were on the site they spent all their time connecting to anyway. And so we were able to drive them through Twitter and through Facebook and through their email into a network, right? And we've seen networks can be transformative. Now I want to point out one point here, which is you look at these networks, and today the people you talk to say, oh, well, you know, the LinkedIn and MySpace, they all have a different market share and they split the market for social networks. This is not the right way to think of it. Actually, the network that's interesting is the sum total of all of those and all the dark matter little networks, our email lists at work, all the other places that we connect, a Google group you might be a member of, those networks in sum actually have a lot of the knowledge that's most pertinent to making good decisions. And so if we can connect to all of those as one piece, then we have something really, really powerful, right? Then we have a network that actually can tap into everybody's knowledge and is also more representative of our country, right? Because one of the great things the Facebooks and Twitters of the world do is they have a good mobile experience. And they say it works on your mobile phone. And what this means is we reach audiences that don't have a brand new iPad, don't have a $2,000 laptop, but still want to be involved in the conversation. By thinking of all the networks together, you realize the largest social network is the web itself. It's not any one provider, right? And that starts to lead us to some insights about, well, if we can assume we're reaching a wide audience, what are the ideas we're going to get back? So you ask this question again, and you ask it on the networks instead of through the usual channels, and you don't get the usual suspects to respond. You get some silly answers, like John Cusack, who said the White House should look into hot tub-based time travel research. Um, but while that's probably a little predictable, you also get a guy in LA saying every house should be able to generate enough electricity to power itself, right? And we get a guy, this is a Microsoft programmer, he's saying he wants to work on oil and energy independence. Uh, this is a guy in Colorado who was talking about algal hydrogen production. I don't even know how it works, but it sounds like something we should be focused on, all right? <laughs> Um, talk about living in space. Yes, we need space colonies, right? This is a woman in the, the mountains of North Carolina who wants to talk about a device for detecting head trauma. This seems doable. This seems like the kind of thing that the president said it matters, we can create and get a host of spin-off benefits, right? We said we were gonna go to the moon and then incidentally we got a GPS system that lets us locate ourselves uh, wherever we're driving to, right? We get these great benefits. A high school kid that says, we want to replace our textbooks with tablets that we can store all our stuff. We're not throwing our backs out carrying books around. We also get this amazing chance to have textbooks that learn from us, not just that teach us, right? And there's amazing potential in these ideas. And so instead of getting a handful of responses, they got about 2,000 responses in two days. And this is not good enough. Merely having two orders of magnitude improvement is something we can do a lot better than, especially the people in this room can help the next time that the call for action goes out to amplify this message to get more and more people to respond and to lead your own organizations to respond. And we're not alone in this. So I'm talking about expert labs and our particular initiative. 
but there are other organizations doing the same thing. The Sunlight Labs is getting data out of the government. So we're saying we want to help the government listen to you. They're saying they want to help the government talk to you. And they're doing amazing work. Code for America is an organization doing similar efforts as Expert Labs, but at the civic and municipal and state level. And so we have a lot of effort. People who are among the best startup tech technologists in the world aren't going to Silicon Valley and saying the iPhone or Facebook are the most interesting platform. They're going to DC and they're saying the federal government's open data initiatives are the most interesting new platform for innovation, period. Not because they're do-gooders, but because they like to invent new stuff. Right? So data.gov is a huge warehouse of data that's completely free. It's getting more and more real time. Entire new businesses will be built on this. If you can build a billion dollar weather channel off of the simple data feeds from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, what can you do when healthcare data is out? What can you do when all these new data sets are live? And similarly, if you're creating new applications and you can distribute them through apps.gov, which is an app store for all federal employees, what are the ideas you're gonna be able to tap into there? Because what we're about to see is how networks will truly transform culture. What are the federal agencies that will be as upended as newspapers were? We don't know yet. The good thing about this is if you had to imagine a network of networks that was created primarily by scientists but for the public good, that served a need for the government to communicate but could be used by anyone, what if you could imagine a system like that? What you'd be describing is what we would actually call the internet. That's what this tool was born to do. Internet means a network of networks. So we have the chance to actually put this tool to its highest purpose after 40 or 50 years of development. And what I hope you'll do, I'm the easiest person in this room to get hold of, get in touch, see what we're doing, come visit us at Expert Labs, follow us on Twitter at Expert Labs, and tell your organizations they have the chance to use the tools we're creating for free. Every time you help us by improving the tools, you're helping your country, and you can get the benefits of being connected to the network yourself. Thank you.